Another example is one of my favorite ones, um, which is about who Jesus' boyfriend was. You didn't know Jesus had a boyfriend? It's in John. The Gospel of John says that uh, the authors of John, plural, yes, they say we, uh, used as some sort of source something that was written, something else written by, quote-unquote, the disciple whom Jesus loved. John's Gospel also says the other disciples asked whether this beloved disciple, the same one, would never die. In the end, it's like, was he never going to die? And you might think, that's a weird question to ask. Why are they asking that of him as opposed to someone else or anyone? And it also says that the, the Gospel of John also has this beloved disciple run to see the empty tomb. Now, he's missing from the other versions of this story. In the other versions in Luke, Peter rushes to the empty tomb to confirm that it's actually empty once the women tell him. But in John, suddenly there's an extra dude there who run, outruns Peter and gets there first. And guess who that guy is? The beloved disciple, who's also not present in any prior gospel. And uh, Luke, or John says that the beloved disciple ran to see the empty tomb, saw the empty burial cloths, and understood what happened. Which is interesting. Like, why is that significant? Why did John have him run there, and why did he have him recognize what had happened? <clears throat> and then uh, it says, uh, John, the Gospel of John also mentions another point, that the beloved disciple was resting on the bosom of Jesus at the Last Supper. So they were cuddling. So uh, they were in love, and they were cuddling. Um, that's a boyfriend. Anyway, um, now, one thing we notice when we look at John, now John has been messed with. Uh, the John that we have is an edit of an earlier version. Things have been added and taken away and moved around out of order. So there's actually chronological sequence problems in John because someone re-edited and moved stuff around and didn't fix the problems. Uh, so we don't really have the original version of John, but it looks like the original version of John said that Lazarus, the, the Lazarus, the guy that Jesus rose from the dead, is the uh, uh, beloved disciple. Because in the remaining sections of John that have survived for us to see it, Lazarus is the only other per the only person who's ever mentioned and named person who's ever mentioned as resting on the bosom of Jesus at previous suppers. So you would expect if it says the beloved disciple is cuddling with Jesus at the Last Supper, all the other suppers who was cuddling with him, it was Lazarus, you would think it would be the same person. Lazarus is also the only person Jesus resurrects from a tomb and who cast off his own burial cloths. Think about that. So now he, this guy whom Jesus rose out of a tomb and he cast off his burial cloth, runs to the tomb, sees it empty, and sees the burial cloth of Jesus, and then he understood. Well, obviously, the beloved disciple is Lazarus. He understood because Jesus did this to him in the story. Lazarus is also the only person the other disciples would ever wonder whether he would never die because he was risen from the dead. So Jesus rose him, rose him from the dead. So the disciples are like, what, what, does that mean he's immortal now? Like, or is he going to die a second time? Like, that question makes no sense unless the beloved disciple is Lazarus because Lazarus was risen from the dead. So they're asking, is he going to live forever now or what's the deal? And this is the kicker on top of all this. The Gospel of John, the surviving sections that we have, outright says Lazarus is the one whom Jesus loved. John 11, verse 3, verse 5, verse 36. So it says Lazarus is the one, is the guy Jesus loved. And so when it says the guy Jesus, when the guy Jesus loved was cuddling with him at the Last Supper, was doing all these other things, they're talking, obviously, the original version meant Lazarus. So Lazarus was Jesus' boyfriend. 